Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, right here, back after a brief hiatus for another Transformer Transformation Review thingy. And still reeling after the joy of auto assembly. And now you won't hear me mention auto assembly for another six months. So, um, <clears throat> I haven't been busy. I haven't been busy. Oh no, I haven't been idle. That's what I meant to say. I have been busy. You know, with YouTube, as with life, you come in and out of things. And um, <clears throat> it's not like you fall out with YouTube or anything like that. It's not like I fell out with YouTube. But, you know, things just kind of draw your focus, don't they? That's the way it works. Um... I'm reviewing some bots tonight, and they're very, very sweet. This is my first review of the new season. Oh, I suppose that's an interesting way of looking at it for me. Um, after auto assembly, I said I wouldn't mention that again. Well, I have a slew of new bots, so I've got new things to review. So I suppose it's the first review of the new season. There you go. I've decided this is the new year. The new Transformers year began uh, about four weeks ago with auto assembly. Very nice. So uh, I just want to tell you a bit about what I've been doing because you know it, it's, it's good work so about six months ago I started working on uh, transcribing not transcribing setting there you go setting a poem by Seamus Heaney to uh, for SATB that's soprano alto tenor bass for a choir so it's a choral work and it's just poem digging I had my very first rehearsal of it last week on a Thursday of Seamus Heaney's poem, and then the next day, Seamus Heaney died, which was really kind of, what's the word, synchronicity, an odd kind of twisted synchronicity. But this is how busy I have been. There you go. There's my, you see, they're digging by Seamus Heaney and me. So I've written all the music. So there's 15 pages worth. There's no point in kind of going through it with you and singing all the parts because uh, you're not going to come around here and record it with me. I have engaged the choir to record it with me because... There is a publisher potentially interested in uh, publishing it, but they have to hear it first, which makes sense. But it's not the easiest thing in the world to get a group of eight people together um, trying to engage a choir without having to pay them, which is a bit of a nightmare. Anyway, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Let me show you some plastic. Now, the concept of <clears throat> the Holy Grail in within Transformers Collectors is well known. The Holy Grail, or the Holy Grail, is that bit of plastic that you want kind of above all others and for a lot of people it's it's a it's fluid and it, it, it changes and it's very personal for example you might want for example Edward um, yeah and Bumble Jump Ready too, of course naturally <clears throat> about to have these 200 subscribers space I'm looking forward to that I may have had something to do with it and um, what was I saying? So, he got his Scorponok. He got his Scorponok. So now, his grail changes. I got, you know, I got my Fort Max, and then my grail changed, and I got, uh, you know, I have lots of grails, that, you know. And then once you achieve a certain grail, then it changes. You move on to the next one. So it's fluid and it's personal. I thought about that, and it makes sense to me. So, <clears throat> these four insignificant little bots meant for the longest time an awful lot to me. They're bots that would potentially mean little or nothing to anyone else. Um, but obviously some people will be very keen. Now I'm talking about the Beast Wars Mutants. Very, very interesting little bots. <clears throat> and I had my... I completed my Beast Wars collection when I got Scorponok last year. Okay. And someone said to me, it was Christopher McFeely actually, the Baden, said to me, no, no, you haven't completed your Beast Wars collection because you don't have the mutants, the Beast Wars mutants. And I said, do they count? And unfortunately, they did count. Or rather, fortunately, they did count. So now I have them. I couldn't find them last year. I couldn't find them. The I wasn't looking for them the year before. But they tend not to appear in conventions. And indeed, if it hadn't been for wonderful Anton, Antronus Prime, wonderful, redoubtable, fabulous man that he is. He came up to me and he gifted me a present. And he said, how you have a look at that now and tell me what you think. And I squealed like a schoolgirl. I don't mind telling you viewers. So, and he said then, in his beautiful Liverpoolian accent, no, Mancunian? Oh, it's something really sexy anyway. Uh, follow me. I know where the rest of them are. So I left my conversation. I was in deeply in conversation with some wonderful person. Um, I can't remember who it was. That's how wonderful they were. And he led me to this place, this 
very sacred and holy place were in this sacred vessel aka a cardboard box at the bottom I had to search all the way to the bottom or rather Anton did my knight in shining armor and he shown me where these four the rather the other three of these four mutants lay and I was so pleased if you could have I wish that there were had been a camera present at the time to take uh, to, to, to record the image of my giggling schoolgirl rapture it was absolutely fantastic so that was my grail I have achieved my grail I shall now show you the plastic so we the mutants ladies and gentlemen are four little bots from the Beast Wars continuity I'm just gonna read from wiki here of course why not um, powerful group of beast warriors who've lost their robot modes but are able to transform between two beast modes. Led by Icebird, the mutants seek to create a purely organic existence. The mutants don't belong to either faction and will attack Predacons in sight, but they largely tolerate the Maximals as a necessary component of their goals. Now, a little bit more. Packaging blurb. A little bit of BG. Not enough to do you any harm here. Megatron developed an anti-conversion virus. Right, he's a crazy fuck, isn't he? Intended to prevent the infected host converting into robot mode, resulting in eventual shutdown. Okay, the mutants were previously fusors. This is great stuff. This is great. I love this. And the virus reacted in an unanticipated way with their physiognomy. It caused their conversion abilities to change, trapping the robot modes between two different beast modes. Isn't that lovely? That's so exciting to me. The virus also bestowed potent extrasensory powers. They've all got supernatural. They're all X-Men. You know, they really are. Upon the former Fusors, with each member having several unique abilities such as invisibility, teleportation, or telekinesis. Great. Unsurprisingly, the Forcer managed to escape Megatron's clutches and then went renegade, starting the Mutant Beast Wars. They started the Mutant Beast Wars, something called the Mutant Beast Wars, whatever that is so we have icebird poison bite razor claw and sound wave now where are you because what's so interesting for me about these guys is that they were never going to be beast wars transformers they were never going to be beast wars transformers in a wonderful bizarre reversal reversal of fortunes just like you had your takara um let me see i'm about to stumble into something here i might not be able to complete now let me just go back so they were going to be Animorphs. They were going to be Animorphs. But of course, Animorphs went down the pan. I have a vague recollection of Animorphs. And I was horrified many years later to find out that it was, it's actually, you know, it's part of the Transformers canon, albeit one that Transformers fans like to push right to the back. So we've, I think we've kind of blotted it out, like that very odd incident many, many years ago. Um, <clears throat> so they were initially intended to be Animorphs. Some of them have little um, andalite heads, or andalite-like heads. They've all got little robot heads secreted about their person, sometimes making for uh, alarming, surprising, and hilarious reveals. Do you know, like the universe, um, which which 2.0 was it? Had the one all these wonderful head reveals. They've got these odd little head reveals that just are hilarious and ridiculous beyond belief. So they were going to be anamorphs. Animorphs failed, so they co-opted them into Beast Wars, and they became the Mutant Beast Wars. They have no robot modes, but they have two beast modes. Everything to like. Let me start with a little Razor Claw action here. I'm going to give you a little bit of BG. Excuse me, I'm going to burp. Razor Claw is a loyal, self-sacrificing warrior who fights with Crusader-like enthusiasm. He harbors a secret jealousy towards those Transformers who still protest a possess a robot mode as a wolverine his tremendous speed borders on teleportation as a velociraptor he is impervious to firepower wonderful great stuff now have a look at this he is a wolverine trust me ladies and gentlemen this is a wolverine um <clears throat> these guys are just wonderful now this is the good side this is the side with all the horrible screws look at this now this is may not be something you're aware of here ladies and gentlemen a little bit of close-up please come on camera make me happy you say well, i want the camera to pick this up because this is the mutant faction symbol let me see uh well that's maybe as good as it's going to get that is kind of what it looks like it looks like a little kind of proton or nuclear symbol 
yeah you can just about see it but it's not maximal it's not predicon it's not autobot it's not vehicon it's not decepticon it's it's this mutant faction symbol this is his wolverine he is a green wolverine it's a very very odd looking thing uh especially his tail because he actually looks like he's given birth to another another wolverine or he's doing a really really awful poo that guy needs some Senecot or some shit. And he's got these very odd forelegs, which are huge, and the back legs. And the proportions are just, just forget it. Just forget it. His mouth will open. That is very, very cool. Now, this is his Wolverine. Let's have a look at the Velociraptor. Now, I actually shouldn't have been so scathing with saying Velociraptor mode because I meant Wolverine mode. This is a pretty strong Velociraptor in that it's definitely some kind of dinosaur. Uh, now, he lacks, this is the only one that lacks something that the others don't. In the original Animorphs line, they had, except this guy, little uh, compartments, little flaps that opened up and they showed you human parts. So they would have shown you flesh, bone or something gruesome. And they, they've been retooled to show you robotic parts, just to let you know that they're still robot parts. But this guy doesn't actually have it, the rest of them do. You can still see that that faction symbol is very clearly available. Is there anything I can do to make that very clear? Oh, that might work a little better. Oh, that's a little bit better, a little bit better. There, look at that. You see, now I'm a happy man. It's a nice looking thing. I love the way his feet transform. That was the Wolverine foot. And you lift up a claw and you pull the other one out and you give it this real Velociraptor look. Now, <clears throat> the transformation is really, really interesting. Um, <clears throat> there's nothing... Uh, the, it, rather, everything about this is really new and fresh because you're going from beast to beast. There's no bot mode except for this. Now, if you've seen Animorphs, you'll know Andalite. So, in Beast Wars, just to prove that there is still something robot about him, he has a robot head secreted about his person. And he looks for all the world like an Andalite. The robot head looks like an Andalite because that's exactly what it is. So what you do, there's a little flap here. When you pull it up, oh my word, let's just get a proper close up on that because you've got to see this. There's his little Andalite head. Are we going to pick it up? Shall we engage the white paper again? Look at that. Now I know the way forward. It does. It looks all the world like an Andalite. And you put it down again. And then you've got back to the head. Very good. I love this guy. Now the one that I was most excited about was Soundwave. Because Soundwave is a bat former and an alligator former. And in a very strange, bizarre twist of fate, he's also Generation 1 Soundwave. I don't know how that works, go and ask someone who understands all that kind of shit, but he's Generation 1 Soundwave as well as everything else. Now I'll give you a little bit of BG, ladies and gentlemen, not enough to do any harm, is a brooder like his fellow mutants with a tendency towards the dramatic. Sorry the camera cut out there so I've had to come back at the very end when I was editing this video only to realise that I'd, the alligator portion had just completely cut out. So this is the alligator Soundwave and as you can see He's absolutely wonderful. There is no problem. There is no problem here. These proportions I can completely live with because he's Beast Wars and I can I can forgive him. And he's one of my holy grails. He's got these four paws which are utterly hilarious. He promises an awful lot. I mean look look at his mouth. You're thinking, okay, these you know, you can at least pose him with his jaws open or something. Nah, that jaw will not open. It looks like it's going to open. It promises an awful lot, but in actual fact, nothing is going to nothing is going to give way very well here. You're going to get a, an illusion to movement, but nothing nothing more than that. Now have a look at his color. What does he look like? He's made of. He looks like he's made of gold plastic. Hmm. We shall see. Now they've all got a very singular and very interesting transformation. I'm not prepared to show you on screen because it would take too long to show you all four. And I do want to show you all four. This is Soundwave's bat mode. And I love it. Absolutely love it. Let's get the white paper out. This is the... Oh, I have a white paper. That's good. Um, this should allow a nice little bit of focus. There we go. Look at that. Yeah, there's holes in it, but hey, it's n I mean, it's nothing compared to a modern Supreme class toy with its bloody holes or something. A Prime Voyager, anybody? But he's really cool. Now, 
I can start to show you some of the little gimmicks here that exist. So he does have the little hair gimmick, but he also has the um, robot components that were initially human co human components, yeah. So in his chest here, let me just show you, at, on his chest, you've got what looks like a bit of a Batman symbol. I really love that. I love that color. This yellow is like the um, Beast Hunter's yellow. Maybe, no, the Predic, yeah, Beast Hunter's yellow. You may have noticed all throughout the uh, Beast Hunter's, all the Predacons have this very, very sexy yellow, and that's what it's like. It's just like this yellow. Probably not deliberate. So, look at this. This is what we do. We open that up. This is what we get. I'm going to get my bit of white paper. And now it's going to work. You're going to see the proper components. Yeah, it's going to work. Look at that. Awesome. Awesome. Absolutely love it. There's the little uh, mutant faction symbol there again. Looking really sexy. Now, where's this little beast mode head? In here, you press this little scale, this little ridge down at the back, and the bat's head will open. Now, let's have a look at this guy. He actually does look a bit, he looks a lot like your kind of old fashioned Bella Lugosi vampire. Let me see if we can get that. Come on, open up now and stop your nonsense. There we go. Let's see, are we going to work? Please, come on, focus. What's it for? I think it's focusing on my finger, is it? Oh, it's not going to happen. It's a terrible shame. But he's got this kind of, he's got this old-fashioned old fashioned kind of vampire head. He's grey, he's got red eyes, and he's got big old teeth, which just makes him look really cool. Let's try it one more time. If I can get the head to stay, if I can get the mouth to stay open, maybe we've got a chance. Uh, because otherwise, it's going to focus on my finger, and you're not going to see much. All right, there we go. We'll try it like that. There we go. That's the way forward. There he is. Look. Sorry, just as we focused there where the camera had a little brain fart, which is apt to do. But hey, that's what you get for quality. Now, let's have one more little look at the head. I'm sure it's going to work. There you go. Good. Yeah, very, very playful. Now, <clears throat> word to the wise. What's he made of? What color is he? He's gold. He's gold plastic. So, I've transformed this guy half a dozen times and I'm not going to do it again because I'm very worried that things are going to break. There's a couple of little posts and ports that there's an awful lot of strain between this arm and this wing flap here. And so I'm just going to unplug those now and I'm going to keep them in this mode in the glass cabinet and I'm not going to touch them again. Now the next place we go is Poison Bite and he was so interesting for me because um, all the rest of them just seemed so much more exciting than him, <clears throat> on paper, that is. And then I got them all in hand, and Poison Bite was the one that easily that I played with most. He's very sexy. He's a Barracuda and a Scorpion. There's nothing not to like there. I know that this is the one George liked the most. He's got some amazing colours on him, this electric blue, really, really amazing colours. And his jaw does open there. Now I'll give you a little bit of the old BG. He's the mutant special operative. He seems to be more religiously inclined than his fellow mutants as he accepts the mutant's mission as part of a higher vision, but also feels abandoned by the Oracle. He often broods about what he believes is the approaching extinction of the mutants, but despite his seeming pessimism, he is well liked by his fellows. He can teleport up to 30 meters in either mode. That's the interesting thing about him. He is one of the X-Men yet again. Just very, very sexy. This is so, so pretty. Now, let me see. I need to get a little bit of a flash card going on in here so you can see all this detail. There we go. Look at the detail in his front fins. He's got that electric blue going on again. And in his fin at the back, and his rear fins, it's such a sexy color. There's no gimmicks in this mode other than the fact that he just looks super sexy. This is his Barracuda. Let's see the Scorpion. So we've gone from red, black and yellow Barracuda to red, black and yellow Scorpion and he, he looks great. He looks he looks so good. Never sure what to do with these back legs like that. Um, he looks absolutely fantastic. Now this is where the gimmicks are. Let me first of all get the white paper out. There we go. I've got the hang of this now. There we go. Yeah, you can see him in all his glory. Pretty much. Now there's a little bit of poetic mechanical license here, but that's okay. Mutant faction symbol is in here. Oh, there you go. Nice little close up of it. Not bad at all. Um, now he ha he does have the robotic component. 
here, but he's also got the head. I'll show you first of all the robotic component. You see, in the inside of this claw, his right claw, you flip this out like that, and you've got, you've got a little gun. Cool. Like it. But the coolest thing about this is where his robot head is located. Right, so there's his tail. You see, there's his little stinger right at the top, and when you press it down, you get this poking out. It's oh, it's so cute. Let me see. Can you get a close up? Yes, you can. Ish, more or less. Yeah, you can. So there's his little head poking out of the top. That's just to remind us all that he is indeed a robot, or he was indeed, he was indeed human, or he was indeed anamorph, or he was indeed andalite. But in this instance, the reason that I'm so is so interested in this guy is he is now officially part of the Beast Wars Transformers canon. And I think he's absolutely lovely. Now, last but not least, Icebird. So Icebird's commander, and we've got a snowy oil, and we've got a polar bear, and they look, they both look fantastic. And he's got some gimmicks in this in both modes that are wonderfully flawed, especially in the uh, snow oil mode. Now, let me give you a little bit of BG, of course, not enough to do you any harm. Uh, we're just going to talk about Icebird. Is a wise and powerful leader of the mutants, though he resents his inability to return to robot mode. He has as a goal to eschew technology completely and evolve to a completely organic existence. As a side effect of his mutation, he's able to read minds, X Men, and communicate telepathically, shut down machinery at will, and become invisible. These are some of the most interesting, without doubt, for me, the most interesting Transformers. You've got these bios that are really super sexy and um, just full of enigma and they've got these superpowers you know the likes of that the x-men will be grateful to have and then you've got the the fact that they do not long they don't any longer possess a robot mode because some chip megatron's been up to but they've got two because they were fusors they have two alt modes two beast modes i just i love that now have a look at iceboard this this guy is absolutely gorgeous really really good now these are these are all deluxes but this guy's big for a deluxe this is the old-fashioned deluxe this is when a deluxe really was a deluxe now let me just get this little gimmick out of the way he's got a little gimmick in his beak and what what you're meant to do is i'm going to set it first of all you see there's a little beak and let's well, see i'm going to have to use the piece of paper all right there's a little beak when i lift my finger the beak moves but what you're meant to do is to press this little lever on top this little flippy bit and the beak's meant to move but it doesn't work it doesn't work in the way that it's meant to so what you do is you set the beak you hold the little lever down then let it go so it's kind of redundant now he's got this odd little tail spring where his tail always wants to spring forward don't understand why that should be there's the tail you want it to stay back but it wants always to spring forward doesn't really matter this mode is absolutely glorious now, you can see he has the mutant faction symbol here on his leg. So he's got it on his leg in both both modes. And this snow wheel looks fantastic. I absolutely love it. But the mode I like to display him in is polar bear. And, you know, I suspect that the reason he is the leader is because the mutant faction symbol is clearly and unambiguously displayed in each of his modes this is his polar bear mode now look at those giant four paws you can see that this is how you would have fought this is how you form from the oil to the uh to the polar bear absolutely love it he just looks so good he does have some gimmicks in this mode and first thing i'll show you is the little uh robot components in there so you lift up the mutant faction symbol and uh, let's see if we can get a little bit of close-up. There you go. And that's a nice little close-up. Uh, the mouth will also open. But, you know, it doesn't really want to. And it doesn't open so well. Actually, I haven't said that. Look at that. With his little pink tongue. That's entirely believable, isn't it? Now, the most comical thing about this is his mutant head. So, his mutant head... Um, rather, the, the little robot mode head that allows you to still understand... That he is still a robot he's still a transformer what you do is you pull this flap back put away the uh, polar bear mode head and then do that and there it is and it just looks completely and utterly ridiculous it reminds me of the scene in beetlejuice 
where they're all sitting outside with their numbers and uh, the guy with the shrunken head at the very end shrinks Beetlejuice little head and that's what he ends up with it's completely ridiculous it looks um, it, it looks like a caricature of a, of a transformer the other thing that uh, I find a little funny about this is that the <laughs> the owl head is poking out of the polar bear's arse which is quite cool now we have a polar bear and we have a snowy owl and look at this shit here we've got these very very funky things I'm thinking these are they're the wrong way around but imagine we could have had those the right way around this would have been a really cool tiger hawk wouldn't it I love how these wings go away there's the snowy owl wings right so there's folding and folding and then they eventually click away and we're not completely sold on this white and grey but it it doesn't really matter because all these things are slightly flawed experiments but the four of them together create love this color scheme here the four of them together create one really for me fascinating faction everything about them the genesis of the plastic the fact that they've come from anamorphs uh, they were originally designed for anamorphs and now have nothing to do with anamorphs and they're completely and utterly beast wars transformers they're mutants, a faction unto themselves. They're neither Maximal or Predacon. They've only got beast modes. They have two beast modes. They used to be Fusors. They no longer have uh, bot modes. And they've got these kind of superpowers, these X-Men abilities. Love them. That's my. That was my previous Holy Grail. I'm not entirely sure what the next one is. Because I'm still reveling in the marvel of these. I would not have had these if Anton, with his eagle or snowy owl eyes hadn't have spotted them and come up to me and made me a wonderful gift of the ice bird to begin with so Anton thank you so so very much they live over there in the glass cabinet at the bottom and I'm not going to touch my sound wave because he may well fall apart so ladies and gentlemen it's very good to be back after my brief hiatus of music writing so it's not wasted you see and I shall see you all again very soon ladies and gentlemen very best of good nights now that's why